Hey everyone, welcome. In today's lesson, I'm going to show you how to build this cool looking 3D football game or soccer if you are in the US. So we are going to be building this game and the way this game works is there is this football here and there is this goalpost. This goalpost will keep on moving left or and right on its own forever. And there is this pointer. So you see, you can look around and the pointer is telling the direction in which you can kick the ball. And you can kick the ball by clicking on the scene, clicking on the game. Anytime you click, the, click on the game, the ball is kicked and it moves forward. And the aim of the game is to score as many goals as possible. Awesome. So let's get started. First of all, this was the final project that I was showing you guys. So I'm going to be adding the link of the final project in the description of our video as well. So you guys can have a look into the final output. And we are going to be starting with this template project link. So the template project link is also going to be added into the description of the video. And here you will see that we don't have any code and we just have the design of the game ready. So the, the goal post is already there. The football is already there and the pointer is there. So now you can see we are going to code the functionality of kicking and of scoring the goals and uh, then the, removing the instructions when the game starts and all of these things. So let's get started with the code, okay? So first of all, let me just close this final game here and let me full screen my window here. Okay, so the very first thing that I want to do is I want the instructions to disappear once the game starts to run, okay? So whenever somebody opens the game, I want the instructions to be visible for, let's say, first two seconds or first three seconds. And then I want the instructions to disappear because they are it's, the instructions are not going to be useful after the game starts. Okay, so to do that, first of all, you can see since there is uh, there are no blocks here, there's no code for the game written here. There is this empty when green play button click block. So what I'm going to do is let me just delete this block here, and we can go to the events section here, events, and you will see the second block here. It says when scene loads. So this is the block that is going to run any time the game loads for the very first time on someone's screen, okay? So what we are going to do is, when the game loads, when the game loads, let's wait for two, three seconds, or let, let's just say let's wait for three seconds, okay? And then we are going to make the instructions disappear. So what are we going to do? You will see in the scene layer section here on the bottom right, on the, sorry, on the bottom left, if you scroll down, this instructions text is this instructions object here. So when you click on instructions, you will see the list of blocks that tells you the list of activities that you can perform with your instructions. And if you scroll down, there is a block called set instructions color to something. Let's bring out this block and attach it inside the when scene loads. So what we will do here is you'll see there is a drop down option in the color section. So when you click on the drop down option, it gives you more properties that you can modify off the instructions. So since we are going to be modifying the visibility property, we are going to turn off the visibility of the instructions. So we will select the visible property here. And now we don't need this text. So we can drag this out and drag it to the trash can here and it will be deleted. Yeah. So what we want to do is when the scene loads, Let's wait for some seconds and then set the instructions visibility to, visibility to false, to basically turn off the visibility, okay? So two things. First of all, let's go to the loops and timers section here, okay? On the top, on the top left corner here, on the top left section, there is loops and timers. When you click here, there is this wait for two seconds block. So we'll drag this out and attach it on the top here. So when the scene loads, wait for two seconds and then turn off the visibility of the instructions object. So how do we turn off the visibility? So for that, we are going to use a logic block. So go to the logic section on the top left corner here. And when you scroll down, you will see there is a diamond shaped block called true, T-R-U-E, true. So let's drag this out and attach it here. So true means on and there is another property here. There is another option here called false. False means off. So set the instructions visibility to false. So turn off the visibility of the instructions object after two seconds has passed from the game load. So you will see that if I go to the play tab here, 
the game loads and after the two seconds of game load after two seconds the instructions disappear okay so you know, for two seconds every, every user anybody who is playing the game can see the instructions and then it will disappear on its own so we can go back to the code window and what we can do is we can modify this two seconds so let's say three seconds so let's give the users some time to see the instructions to read the instructions the instructions clearly say that they can click on the screen or tap on the screen to kick the ball so let them read the instructions for like first three seconds and then they can play the game so the instructions will disappear so now the instructions part is done so let's start with uh, the functionality of kicking the ball okay so first of all you see there is this green pointer right and you are looking at the game through a camera so you it's it's like you're standing in the game and anywhere you look anywhere you look this arrow this uh, green pointer defines the direction in which you can kick the ball okay so this is this you are looking into the game through a camera object okay so you will see that there is a camera object in the game so what we want to do is anytime you click on the scene anytime you click on your game whatever direction your camera is pointing at we need to first of all find out that direction and then kick the ball in that direction okay so what we are going to do is we are going to create a variable okay so scroll down in the top left in this global section and you'll see there is a category of blocks called variables so when you click here we are going to create a variable called direction so click on this create a variable button and give your variable the name so we want the variable to be named direction d i r e c t i o n and press enter and now you see the direction variable has been created so what we're going to do is we're going to drag this block out and where are we going to use this so what we want to do is we want anytime you click on the scene we want to find out the direction we are looking at and then kick the ball in that direction so in this events section on the top left again if you click here drag out this when scene loads block again but this time what we will do is you will notice that when scene loads has a drop down here and if you click on the drop down there are multiple options so there is scene clicked scene touch starts scene touch ends and scene touched so scene clicked is what we are going to be using for coding the functionality of the game on your desktop or on your laptop so when you click on scene clicked here it says when scene is clicked so when the scene is clicked we are going to use this direction variable to find out the direction you are looking at so this green pointers direction so how can we find out this direction it's a really easy step so you see there is this camera object here in the bottom left section click on the camera object and there is a block called camera gaze direction so this block will tell you tell your computer the direction you are looking at in the game so drag out this block and attach it inside this empty space okay so now there's going to be a slightly uh, complex part here but let's uh, go through the uh, steps one let's go through the entire thing step by step okay so i'm going to take you to the design tab now in the design tab when the design tab loads if you click on any of the names here on the left panel you will see the properties panel of that selected object appears on the right side yep and we have this uh, ball here so i have selected the ball object you can see the ball object is selected in the game as well the ball object is selected here as well and in the properties panel you will see that there are position proper position rotation and scale and you will see each of these properties they have x y and z values they have three values stored in them so the position of the ball contains three values there is an x value there is a y value there is a z value because we are in the 3d space so any parameter is going to contain uh, these x y and z values so if you're if you want to throw the ball in a specific direction the direction is also going to contain x y and z value of the direction okay so you will see if we go to the code window now so we have 
stored the direction cameras the direction that you were looking at cameras gazing direction in this direction variable but this contains this will now contain three components this will now contain x y and z components of its own okay what we have to do is we have to isolate each of those x y and z values we have to take out the x value of the direction variable we have to take out the y value of the direction variable and we have to take out the z value of the direction variable so how can we do that easy you go to the variable section again and let's create a new variable called direction x so i'm going to call it dir underscore x okay and click on create Similarly, I'll create two more variables. I'm going to call the second one dir underscore y. So this, I'm going to store the y component of the direction variable in dir y. Okay. And similarly, so you see I have dir x, dir y, and let's create dir z. Okay. So we are going to store the z component of the direction variable in this dir z. So now what do we do? drag out this set variable dirz to this block and place it just below the set variable direction block so once you have uh, told your computer to find out the camera's direction and store the direction in the direction variable so then what we do is we are going to now extract the x y and z values from the direction variable so set dir x let's start with the x value of the di direction component so what we will do is on the top left here there is a list and maps category click on list and maps and here if you scroll down there is a block called extract value for property in mapping just just use this block okay we'll we'll drag out this block and now what we will do is we want to take out the x value of the direction variable so extract value for x in the mapping of direction so go to variables here and click on directions and drag it out here so set the variable dir x to the x value of the direction variable okay simple what this block does is this block will just take out the the, the direction variable contains uh, an x y and z value okay so this block will just take out the x value of this direction variable and then store that in the dir x variable value here and if we duplicate this right click and duplicate and say set dir y to the value extract value y so change this here extract value for y in the direction variable okay and similarly duplicate this and select dir z and for dir z we will say extract value for the z property in the direction variable so now the x dir x dir y and dir z will only be containing the x y and z values of this direction variable and the reason we are doing this is what we can do now is you will see that you can go to the ball here and what we do is go here and you can see we can set the ball's velocity see set the ball's velocity if you scroll down you will find the set ball velocity block let me show you again so go to the ball object scroll down keep scrolling down and in this red block section in the physics category you will find a block called set balls velocity okay drag this out and we can set the velocity of the ball to the dirx diry dirz so just like i said just as so the position had x y z values rotation had x y z values for any object and just like direction has x y z values similarly velocity will also have x y z value for the object okay so in the x value what we will be doing 
we will be saying set the ball's velocity to dirx okay so go to the variable section here and drag out dirx similarly delete this one and delete this one from here as well uh, duplicate the dirx block add it here say diry for the y value and for the z value say dirz so this block is saying set the ball's velocity in the x direction to the dirx value so find we found out the camera's direction okay dirx is nothing but the camera's x direction okay and then we are saying that the ball's velocity in the x direction will be basically the direction in which you're kicking the ball is going to be the x direction of the camera for the x value here and for the y value the y direction of the camera and the, for the z value the z direction of the camera so this now is going to throw the ball in the camera's direction so let's see if this is working or not so click on the green play button to run the code here and you will see that instructions disappear after three seconds now if i click on the scene okay so see i'm clicking on the scene but nothing is happening so what can we do here so you will see that when you hover over the the this body velocity block it will give you okay hmm. so what happens is this body velocity block is a physics block so this will only work if the ball is a dynamic body okay so we have okay let me show you here so if you go to this design section and here select your ball object now scroll down in the properties so you see there is a physics property and it says type none so no physics is applied to the ball object right now and if you scroll down if you click on the drop down menu here you will see that it has two options for physics static and dynamic dynamic means that gravity will act on the ball so ball will act like a real world ball where if you put the ball in the air then it will fall down and static means the ball will act like a wall so a wall you you can no matter how hard you hit a wall a wall does not move right it it stays where it is it it's like a rock so the if you say static is just going to be like it will ball will be stuck in the scene in the scene here it won't move at all from this place and dynamic means gravity will act on it and you know, the ball will behave like a real world ball all right so by default in the design tab we are going to keep the physics none but in the code window what we will be doing is anytime you click anytime we click on the scene so before giving the ball a velocity what we should do is we should set the physics of the ball so here in the click on your ball object and scroll down in the blocks and you see there is a block called set ball physics to all right drag this out and place it here and now in the drop down select dynamic body we want the ball to have that all of the real world ball physics of rolling and uh, jumping bouncing all of those things so dynamic body will give you that effect okay so now let's see if it works or not so click on the green play button to run the code after three seconds we know the instructions will disappear and now i look and i click see my ball is rolling in the direction i was looking at see anytime i look in a new direction my ball moves in that direction but it's moving very slowly the speed of the ball is very slow so let's reload this game here and let's increase the speed of the ball so to increase the speed of the ball there's a very easy thing we can do we are going to create a new variable called speed okay click on variables here click on create a variable and let's create a variable by naming it speed okay and at the very beginning of the game what i'm going to do is i'm going to set the speed variable to some value so i'm going to set it to let's say 20 okay so uh, how do i set it to 20 you can in the section here on the top left click on the math category and there is this number block so click on this number block and attach it here and now we say uh, speed let's say 20. so we are setting the speed variable to 20 and now what we can do is 
we know that the ball will be moving in this direction dirx diry dirz now to increase the speed of the ball in each of these directions what we can do is we can multiply each of these dirx diry and dirz with the speed value let me show you what we will be doing so so click on this math category again on the left section and scroll down you will find a block called one plus one okay so drag this out here and let's delete both of these ones from here and attach it here in the x section now it says uh, something plus something right so this plus there's a drop down menu here click on the drop down and you will see that it has the option of plus so addition subtraction there is my, a minus symbol for subtraction there is an asterisk symbol for uh, multiplication the star symbol for multiplication and then there is a slash that indicates division and then there is this caret it's for exponents so we are going to use the multiplication here the star symbol so click on the star symbol and place dirx in the first block so we will be saying set the body velocity of the ball in the x direction to the value of dirx variable multiplied by the speed variable so click on the variables section here again and drag out the speed variable okay i'm going to delete this diry and dirz so here what we are doing is we are increasing basically we are magnifying the speed currently our ball is moving at a very small speed and we are multiplying the whole thing by 20 so we are making the ball 20 times faster now so we, we can do the same thing for diry times speed for y and then duplicate it and say dirz multiplied by speed for the z direction okay so now when you run the game let's click on the green play button instructions will disappear in three seconds and now see let me look in this direction and click on the ball awesome so you see my ball went to that direction and there is something unique will happening here so see what's happening is the ball kept on moving the ball did not come back to our original position so what we have to do is let, let, let me show you again so click on the green play button so now if i if i kick the ball in this direction and then if i let's say i kick the ball anywhere anytime i click on the scene my ball keeps on moving in that direction okay so there are two things we want to do first of all we want the ball to return to the original position after some time okay and then what we want to do is while the ball is moving while the ball is already moving if you click on the scene again and again it should not this it should not again kick the ball in midair right so okay let, let's start with the uh, with the logic that the ball should come back to the original position after some time so let's say after four seconds of ball has been kicked it should come back to the original position all right so let's go to the design tab and see the position of the ball so here now if you click on the ball you will see in its properties the position value in the x is zero in the z is zero and in the y position the position is 0 0.5 so we are going to be after four seconds of uh, the ball being kicked we are going to set the position of the ball back to 0 0 0.5 and 0 in x y and z direction so let's code that go to the code window again now let me just zoom out of my blocks here yeah so here we are saying uh, set variable direction when the scene is clicked set the variable direction to the camera's direction the camera's looking direction and then extracting the x y z values of the direction and then we are saying set balls velocity to x y and z multiplied by the speed value okay so now we will, what we will be doing here is we'll say wait for four seconds so after the ball has been kicked after four seconds has passed after the ball has been kicked then set the ball back to the original position so what how do we do that go to the logic section here no go to the loops and timer section here and you will find there is another there is this block wait for two seconds right 
So let's drag this out and place it below the set ball velocity. And we say here, wait for, let's say, wait for five seconds. So after five seconds of the ball has been kicked, bring the ball back to the original position. So what we will do now is go to the ball property here, ball object here, and scroll down. And you see there is a set ball position too. Okay. So drag this block out. Set ball position x, y, and z to zero. We know the original position of the ball currently. The x value was zero. The z value was zero. But the y value was not zero. Y value was 0 0.5. So set that here again. Okay. So now let's see if this is working or not. So let's click on the green play button and let's click on the scene. So my ball is moving, moving. And okay, five seconds passed and then the ball came back to the or original position. But then it still kept on moving. Yeah, so the, the ball is not stopping. Uh, after coming to this position, the ball is not stopping. So what we have to do is, we have to do something different. We have to turn off the physics of the ball the moment it comes back to the original position so that the ball does not keep on moving again and again. All right. So set the ball's position to this, but also turn off the physics of the ball after the five seconds has passed. So click on the ball here and scroll down and see there is this block called turn ball physics off. So see this dynamic body making the ball a dynamic body is making the ball roll and bounce and jump and everything, right? And when you turn off the physics, let's turn off the physics first and then set the ball's position, okay? So the moment you turn off the physics, the ball will stop bouncing and stop moving it will stop moving completely this this velocity will not work anymore for on the ball okay so let's see if this is doing what we expect in the game or not so click on the green play button and instructions should disappear in three seconds that's completely fine now i click on the scene the ball moved moved and five seconds later the ball is back to the original position and it is staying here it is not moving anymore it will not move till the time I click on the ball again. I click on the scene again. Okay. And then again, five seconds after it, it will come back to the original position. Okay. So now the second issue that we are, we needed to solve was, see, I click on the ball, ball went there. And now if I click again, the ball, see, every time I click on the scene, my ball keeps on moving. Okay. Yeah. So every time I click on the scene, the ball keeps on moving. What we want to do is we don't want the ball to keep on moving. Let me show you again. So I click on the green play button. Let me kick the ball in this direction. And then if I click on the scene again, see the ball now changed the direction. I don't want that to happen. What I want to happen is if the ball is already moving, then clicking on the scene should not have any effect in the game, right? Basically, what I'm saying is, let's say when scene is clicked, this all of these should be happening if you have not kicked the ball already, if the ball is not already moving, okay? If the ball is already moving and when the ball is already moving, if you click on the scene, then none of this should be happening. Then this block should not be running. Okay. So to do that, what we are going to do is we are going to use a Boolean variable. A Boolean variable is like a switch. So it can, a Boolean variable stores two things, two, only two values on and off. Okay. A Boolean variable can be turned on. So just like this, uh, this true and false that you were seeing here for the visibility, a Boolean variable can store two values, true or false. True means on and false means off. Okay. So what we are going to be doing is we are going to, let's uh, go here, go to the variable section, click on create a variable and select. Uh, and uh, this time I'm going to give this a name called is ball moving. Okay. 
and at the beginning of the game since the ball is not moving I'm going to set the value of this variable to false that means it is this variables value is off so set variable is ball moving to and then go to the logic section here and drag out this true block and change this to false so the ball is not moving currently as per this variable and what we will do is when the scene is clicked all of these act all of this activity should happen if the ball is not moving so we are going to add an if condition so click on your logic section again and this time drag out this top the very first block here the if block okay if and then we have to write the condition here so if the ball is not moving only then perform all of these activities of finding out the direction and then moving the ball in that direction okay so if the ball is not not moving right so go to the variable section and we have the is ball moving variable that is yeah we have the is is ball moving variable and that is false false means it's off right so if the ball is not moving so to do that what we do is go to the logic section and not there is this not option so if the ball is not moving then do all of this okay but also understand that the moment you do all of these activities the ball is moving the moment so there are two components in this entire code this part of the code is going to make the ball move so here what we will be doing is when this part of the code runs so this and this part of the code runs 5 seconds after this part of the code runs right so in so once you have found the direction and you, when you are kicking the ball in that direction what we will be doing is here we go to the objects cat go to the variables category and set the variable is ball moving to true okay because now the ball is moving and then we say wait for 5 seconds as as we were doing now and then turn off the ball physics set the ball's position to the original position and set the variable is ball moving to false so duplicate this now the ball ha has stopped moving again right so set it yeah so the benefit of doing this now is that if you click on the let me reload this game here and you click on the green play button now if i click on the game here see no matter how much i click on the scene now the ball did not move till it came back to its original position okay so only now only when the ball is at the original position only then you will be able to kick the ball otherwise clicking on the scene will not have any effect in the game okay so here right now if i click nothing will happen in the game but when the ball has come back to its original position then there will be the kick effect okay so this was the use of this boolean variable it's called uh, so as in any variable that just stores two values true or false zero or one true is on false is off on means uh, one and off means zero our computer reads everything in terms of zeros and ones right so on or off zero or one true or false like that so yeah so initially ball is not moving so if the ball is not moving then do all of these activities but while you are doing this activity because you are making the ball move so set the variable of is ball moving to true and then at 5 seconds after the ball has started moving we are then making the ball not move and come back to the original position so turning the physics off setting the ball's position and then setting the is ball moving variable back to false okay simple easy right so we are we have that cool looking uh, cool uh, uh, football kick and uh, rolling and bounce effect and you can is also see that when the ball 
goes inside the goal post it like bounces on the goal post realistically and then comes back towards us as well and then comes back to the orig orig original position okay so really simple now let's add the score effect okay let's add the score so what we're going to do is we are going to create a new variable called score so create a variable and call it score and this is going to be very simple at the beginning of the game we are going to set the variable set the variable score to a zero value right because no goals no goals have been scored when the game starts so the variable score is zero and now what we are going to do is when the ball collides with the goal post right when the ball collides with the goal so you will see in the in the bottom left section there is an object called goal so we are going to do this when you click on click on the ball object first of all in the bottom left section and here in the list of blocks if you scroll completely down there is a block called when ball collides with okay so this ball this block helps the, you de detect collision between two objects. So when the ball collides with something, which thing here? Goal. So when the ball collides with the goal object, right? So go to the bottom left section again, scroll down, and there is this goal object. So click on the goal object, drag this goal out, and attach it here. So this will block will now say, when the ball collides with goal. Yep. So what should happen when the ball collides with goal the ball should uh, well the score will increase right so go to your variable section and drag out this block that says change score by one okay so now let's run this code and see whether it's working or not okay so my there there is a score indicator here but the score is not changing here all right what what's happening let's figure let's under, understand that so what we are doing is we are set we, are, we created a variable called score and set its value to zero at the beginning of the game right and then what we are doing is we are saying that anytime the ball collides with the goal object then change the score by one increase the score value by one but while we were playing the game we saw that here the score did not increase that is because this is a text object and that is only displaying a certain text here. So what we have to do is once the, we update the score here, we have to display this new score in this text here. So you will see that on the left side here, there is this text object called scoreboard. If you click on scoreboard, you, will, you can scroll down. And here, there is a block called set scoreboard text. See that? So we can use this to set the scoreboard text to whatever text we want. You can drag this out and place it here. And then we can say, click on the variable section here and drag out the score block and attach it here. So what we are saying is when the ball collides with the goal, change the score by one. So increase the score by one and then set the scoreboard text. This is the scoreboard. So set the text of the scoreboard to the value of the score. All right. So if I click on the green play button and now if I run this, see, the score increased. Let me reload the game. Let me reload the game. Yeah. So now when you click on the green play button here, see, score increased, right? Simple. Let's uh, try to get more score. Yeah. So our score is increasing. But what's happening is uh, that the score text has disappeared it's only displaying the number because we are only making the scoreboard text to display the score value the score value is a number right we want i want it to say the word the alphabets s c o r e i want that to be displayed in the game as well so to do that what we are going to do is we are going to go to the text option on the top left text option here and then here you will see that there is a join and then two empty spaces so we can use this block to join two different types of text together. So what I'm going to do is, again, go to the text option. And then the very first block here that says create a text, I'm going to use this block. Drag this out and attach it here. And then here I'm going to say S 
C O R E colon and space score and this is going to be the going to be the text that we want to display beside this number. Join this text with the value of the score variable and then display that together here. So if I click on the green play button now and let's run the game. So yeah, I did not score the score any goals there, but uh, let's see. Yes, so you see, since I was replaying the game, so scores are from one, and now it's displaying that score number there. That it's that score as the text there as well. Yes, yeah. So I have a C O R E that score, uh, the text string, and then the number that's my goal number, number of goals I have scored. All right. Awesome. Cool. So I'm guessing this will actually be enough for this lesson. All right. So we have one, one small thing remaining. So this entire game right now, this will not be working. This will not work on your phone. Okay. You can uh, publish your project. Now, if you click on, you will be seeing a remix button here. Uh, when you open the template project, you will be seeing a remix button, log into your profile and remix your project after adding the code and you will have your soccer game ready. Okay. But the only problem here is if you try to run this project on your tablet or on your phone or in your AR mode, currently it will not work. The uh, reason being that we have added the scene click functionality and there is no click functionality on your phone. There is no mouse on your phone or on your uh, tablets, right? So, but uh, your mobile phones and tablets have touch screens. So there is a scene touch event for your phone. So what we can do is to make the entire game work for your phone as well, for your phones or tablets or to make it work in the AR mode as well. What you can do is you can just this entire when scene click block, just right click here, duplicate it. Okay. And here now click on the drop down and click on the scene touched when scene touched. Okay. There are multiple other options as well, touch start and touch ends, but we are going to use the scene touched event. So this will now, this, this block will work on your phone and this block will work on your laptops and desktops. Okay. And this block will also work for the AR mode. So what you can do now is once you have done all of this, you can publish your project, remix your project and let me update my project here. So if I update my project here. You will see if I click on the scan here, there is this QR code of my project. You can click on the scan of scan button, view the QR code and scan this in the AR app. So uh, the Hatch iOS app, Hatch XR's iOS app, if you download that and you scan this QR code, then you will be able to run the project in AR as well. This project will run in AR as well. Okay. And it will, it will it's going to look amazing in AR as well. So try it out in AR and try to play the game in AR. Otherwise, if you don't have an iPhone or iPad, then what you can try is on any other phone, on any Android phone or an, any other tablet tablet that you might have, you can just scan the QR code, scan this QR code using Google Lens or any other QR code scanner that you might have on your phone. And uh, then you will be able to run the phone game in VR mode. Okay. Not in AR mode, but in VR mode at least. All right. Cool. So this is going to be the end of uh, this tutorial. I would love to see what projects the output that you guys create. What you guys can try is uh, you guys can try changing the design, adding a football stadium around in the design if you want, adding uh, any other design elements in the game as well to make it more personal, to make the game more customized to your uh, looks and to your preferences. Okay and uh, just publish the projects and share your project links in the comments and i would love to see what you guys build out of this project all right cool awesome see you guys in the next tutorial then bye bye